was a visitor. She was a visitor. She was a visitor. She was a visitor. Musical guest is Kanoko Nishi, and she will be playing Koto, cybernetically enhanced by extra voices that are listening. <sighs> Monitress. A long time ago, we played a duo, and I think we even had a band name. I think it was Sideless. I think that's what we called it. I don't know if that's what we're calling it tonight, but we'll find out. I'm not sure if the rest of the show will really be mixed, and so until we're totally certain we're both ready, tonight's episode, whenever it's not cybernetically enhanced Koto, it's going to be Ashley Mix. I have brought about 30 CDs of the work of the composer Robert Ashley, and they're all just going to be going one to four at a time. It'll, it'll, it'll help us understand it better. Talk to you soon. Of the train and the going from the garret there. I bought three seats. Abbiamo creato una dicotomia. And I got to be our Entering system. Silent witness.
grapes. La dicotomia di Mario. Non sappiamo niente della sua origine. Riconosciamo la sua presenza. She was a visitor. The scraping of the blade across the middle fence Sometimes 50 kilometers for each hour Riconosciamo che rimane in noi When green lights are the intersection of the planes of the black glasses and planes of hats pulled down Planes of the black glasses Entering the system And the black black glasses and the planes of the hats pulled down The planes of the arcs of the black glasses and the planes of the hats pulled down The plane is under right by the enormous pressure in this little room Una tendenza A vedere Come in un dice i forget about the plane in between them. I forget about the people in the concert. I forget about the music concert. I forget about the people. I forget about the plane between them. Una tendenza. She was a visitor. Entering system, 18 billion.
questo concetto non sia originale per noi. Ma che cosa Continuando a non sapere mai quale sia la sua origine. I am with too much excitement about the music of the stories. I forget about the stories. I have forget about the stories of the music. I forget about the night, got the waters of the ocean, the mountains and the ocean floor and all the fish and all the things and the ocean floor held a wreck. Exact them all between the hundredth pair of the bow. I think without the black glasses. La dicotomia ci distrae. I 
or at least you were and now it's going to be well let's get the panning let's get the panning precisely right Ordered. there's going to be the sounds of uh, Kanoko Nishi on Koto uh, give it a couple of minutes You'll be able to tell it's a Koto eventually. It's time for music.
The ship will be undocking soon.
Estrel, Vanguard.
92.2, 94.1 KPFA, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, 97.5 K24 APR in Santa Cruz, and online at kpfa.org. I feel confident in saying that that was a performance by the group Sideless, myself, and Kanoko Nishi. Um, if she says anything aloud in the next room, it'll go under the microphone. No, no, she's not going to say anything. Um, now I had seen enough. Okay. This is a nightmare. First, there was a right down the street, who had indeed gone through some changes and had been rapidly replaced after her affair with the surly motorcycle man had escalated to an impossible state of affairs. Oh, no. This genteel woman, two doors down, had become the stomping ground for all bikers and all pairs in the area, and Sundays were dreaded by residents of the neighborhood. Oh, no. It was wild, and Ingrid was in hell. I'm not sure if she went back over to Europe, or whether she simply crossed over into degeneracy. But in any case, her replacement was Katja, an absolutely gorgeous creature close to six feet tall, with blonde, wavy hair down to her buttocks. She was almost unbelievable in her beauty. So much so that Sarah and Matthew's father looked embarrassed in her presence. Katja spent the first few relaxing weeks learning the locations of all parks and playgrounds within a 20-mile radius while awaiting the arrival of a third precious child. Yes, the baby was born finally on the morning of Halloween. Halloween. And Dad was home from the hospital in plenty of time to take the kids out for a round of trick-or-treat. Halloween. He brought them by our house on their route and seemed in a most festive mood as he had been celebrating the blessed arrival with friends who had dropped by for the last several hours. I'd heard their blender and ice crusher working on overload and surmised that they had been imbibing margaritas in a two-fisted fashion. Halloween. The oversized Mexican hat and Indian blanket embellishment indicated the intoxicated state he'd achieved. He was certainly going all out for Halloween. First off was the cape, then the shield and the bell. 
She used the sword mercilessly to probe his inner thighs and stroke his genitalia. And when occasionally he'd reach for her, she'd briskly push away his arm with her pointed outstretched toe as she proceeded with her torturously hypnotic dance. When she removed the final item, the headdress, she leaned completely over, allowing her long flaxen hair to trail over Pop's furry stomach, down to his thighs, gently sweeping at first, and then picking up speed until she was at last thrashing him with her mane and gyrating in a most erotic fashion. Still balanced on the arms of the lounger, she grasped herself and he grasped himself, manipulating themselves to a frenzy. After collapsing into separate, silent, spasmodic pools of delight, he in the chair and she now Hello. on the deck. Katja simply picked up her accoutrement and bade him a fond good night. Good night. As he lay there for a while, staring up at the sky and later, muttering something to himself about not feeling guilty. Good night. Since he'd never laid a hand on her. Good night. Close call, I thought to myself. No. Okay, I think just a little more sideless, starting right now.
Hello. Thank <laughs> you. 
entering Grand Exchange. Three. Reading.
Greetings. 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 Greetings.
to deal with, I quote for you. As briefly as possible. From an embarrassing piece. In the local newspaper. This gives you some idea. She will not be at the class.
wasn't me. Each age has a challenge. How is this to understand that coincidence? 
coincidence is a symbol of reproduction. Some people of the three great families do believe one way, and yet some do believe another, and some believe another. The intersection bears interest, forwardness and backwardness, or the idea direction is a principal concern of the ladies. This summarizes all that we can know. There is no before and after Twice the average. This number did not receive a name. It is one of the unnamed numbers. The secret kinds of numbers are usually called hard to count to. Maybe in order to keep them secret, I know the people of the three great families have seen to me that the people are not among the people. To speak more rightly, more clearly, more properly, they are not of the people. People of the three great families are divorced in their situation from the enduring things. They are divorced in time and divorced in space. So there is gathering between them, gathering correct separation without intent to know right from wrong. Gathering expresses this the sixth age. Gathering is politics of all that. Gathering does not know right from wrong. Right from wrong is on to small scale. People who want to know right from wrong are right almost always half the time. People who want to know right from wrong are called good and are widely praised, but are wrong almost always half the time. So all things stay the same, nothing heals. The shadow of the one falls across the other in interpretation. Not to know right from wrong allows more. Loyalty invokes larger forces. Loyalty does not know right from wrong. It is indifferent to rightness and different to wrongness. It is enacted in an instant. It is required when one is least prepared. As no rewards cannot be repaid. Exact choice and constant attention. Loyalty has the largest awareness of the confrontation, which brings things out to be seen clearly. Loyalty joins man to woman and man to man and woman to woman. Indifferent to a future good. Loyalty does not improve the world. Loyalty does not ease the goal. It is indifferent to the end. Loyalty is the act of loving. It is the rash act of protection. Indifferent to consequences. It is not explained or shareable. It is unpredictable and rash. It is the guidance to clear
you're listening now that you're not listening to live music to a mix of the music of Robert Ashley. Why not? Over the edge, Ashley mix. You know, Don would never really actually let himself... Well, no, actually, sometimes he did. He totally would play lots of Bob Dylan or Quicksilver Messenger Service or uh, Moody Blues Records all in a row. So, sure, this is Over the Edge. We're listening to a lot of Robert Ashley all in a row. That was the final track of the opera, Now Eleanor's Idea, sung by Joan LaBarbera. Before that was Your Money, My Life, Goodbye. Also Joan LaBarbera in the lead, but also um, Jacqueline Humbert. Before that was his disco single on Lovely from the Early 80s, still not out on CD, Music Word, Fire, Cuckoo, and I Would Do It Again. Before that, the nearly too spicy for radio au pair from Atalanta, Acts of God 2. And at the top of the show, there was She Was a Visitor, How Can I Tell the Difference, and Giving Love Away from Atalanta, Acts of God, Part 1. In the background now is Superior 7, and, well, now it's another track that isn't on CD yet. It's The Bar. This is a close-up. She wanted her 
savings and whatever she can get in a minute. I said, I need 4.1 kpf and 89.3 kpfb in Berkeley, 88.1 kfcf in Fresno, and 97.5 k248br in Santa Cruz, and online at kpfa.org. This is the Universal Media Network. from the music store. 30 easy lessons. Just do as I do. Watch. C C E E C C G G C C B B C C G G Always. Boogie Woogie is the vessel of the eternal present. That's the only way to use that word. She speaks of nowness. Everything is now. Be with me now. Now. Give me a little love and now. This is all. Rodney's going crazy. His sense of now is rusty. The airstream and its obligations six nights at the bar. The magnum double keyboard organ. Patterns in a tapestry of one crash among. No, not among. In the line of crashes to eternity. Separated by Buddy. Could we have the cowlick, please? Blink. Two. Left. Four. Left. Forward. Blink. Etc. It does not occur to Rodney that he could lie down with animals. The bar is bad enough. Now he's met his nemesis. Nemesis face to face. And this brown fellow in his $800 suit. His priceless shirt and blue shoes made up the sky. And with a smiler at his side has just come in. The bar on Rodney's shift for open. Brown fellow, but he speaks again. The moment is forever. Structure is a performance of mind and what is ahead of us and what's behind. The drone in all its forms must amplify the moment to career dimensions. It is the necessity of practice for those who are engaged. Otherwise, i.e., if you are not engaged, out of work, at your leisure, call it what you will. The moment has its own dimension. You can find it all It is the abyss of the flick. Under my teacher said it's but a click. That took years to understand. Aimlessly I wandered in plain time. I planned. Dot, 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 dot. Intersections. I drew intersections. Entering less clear than the last. Three. My friends in physics, thank you for said it's simple. Bend the plan. I said, don't you watch the movies that's been tried, and there was no relief. The Spanish tried, they curved their mustache to the plane of time, and there was no relief. It only leads to laughing. Laughter is relief for those who are engaged. I was engaged on Gage. Big deal, the text says. Thunder. Endless thunder on the rolling plains comes back to us in town like news. It's bigger than we thought. The pressure drops. Hello. To the Mississippi. There is still time. Insert. Call the groom. Dress the bride. This is the envelope of the click. It lifts us in our air. 
It makes us pure. Super Highway it is Brand our Exchange for It is our reason. In a while, we need to turn upward. That's the word. Sideways on the plain to at least the Mississippi, the Holy River. Imagine the great curve, the plain, the plains, and all its markings. We were here and watch your water in markings on the scale of its centuries. The earth is drawn upon, drawn like lipstick on a mirror, in a scale of centuries to be seen, and our presence read through the lens that is the moment of the click, lens to lens, touching self to self. The inside, and that's the word to the outside. A word, and that's the word forever. Forgetful of the plane, its markings, the intersections, the plans. Forgetful of the versions, the performances. You may kiss the bride, the lips to lips, the plane, the curved plane. Proximity of markings, the nearness of markings, which is why they were abandoned as our work here finally in favor. Last night I dreamed that. Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. Last night I dreamed that. This is a couple of Entering Grand Exchange for. For the insight of the dream itself, which we have not experienced, remember, is a common dream for her. I'm sorry. What I meant was that last night I dreamed as I ordinarily do, and I wanted you to know that the dream was a common one for me, which I thought you could not know unless I told Just you. Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. I dreamed that I was standing in a beautiful meadow on an almost cloudless day. The meadow seemed to go on in soft rolling hills almost forever. It was covered with early summer flowers. Just the a sun moment, was shining. please. I'm sorry. The sun was shining. I was alone. I was at peace with myself. It was a rare moment. It was without any foreboding. The dream began in foreboding. To appreciate that the dream is commonplace even before the dream has begun is a version of foreboding. I'm sorry. There was no foreboding. If I gave you that impression, it was a mistake. There was no foreboding. That is the part of the dream that I don't understand. The moment that is so memorable in the dream came with no foreboding. Unlike most Just of the moments moment, in my life, please. I'm sorry. This is hard Just to moment, explain. Please. I'm sorry. What is hard to explain is that I was taken so much by surprise by what happened, and at the very same time, it seemed so natural. It was surprising and natural. Just a moment, time. please. I'm sorry. It was such a pleasure to be surprised. I had forgotten. All moment is shaken by the absolute rarity of I'm the sorry. Dream. I was standing in a vast meadow that was at the same time the front yard of my house. I had those feelings at the same time. I don't remember any details from the dream that gave me the idea that the meadow was the front yard of my house. But the feeling of the identity was clear, and I remember it clearly even now. The language of describing the dream describes the foreboding, intentionally or not. The memory of the dream has no sense of foreboding. The language describes an image with two identities. The memory of the dream reconciles the two. I'm sorry. Neither of those things seemed important to me compared to the power the dream Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. As I was standing in the meadow, an airplane flew over to great height. It was an old type of airplane with a propeller engine. That sound is easy to recognize. I could barely see the airplane. It was so high. But when I noticed the sound, the airplane was almost directly overhead. The idea of the distance of the airplane is very clear. The language for describing the dream is full of foreboding. I'm sorry. I don't know any other way to tell the story of the dream without telling you why the dream could surprise me so and still seem natural. The image of the dream has about a structure of foreboding. I'm sorry. I'll go right to the thing that happened in the dream. Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. Somebody called to me from the airplane. They called my name. I could hear it as clearly as if the caller were only a few feet away, but the sound of the call was at a great distance. The sound of the call came Just a from moment, please. I'm sorry. There was a great difference between the sound of the call and the sound that I could imagine coming from the airplane. Especially because the sound of the airplane engine was so natural. A woman is distressed by a dream because the image of the dream differs from any image in her experience. I'm sorry. 
The dream made me very happy, and it was memorable because it was so surprising. Just a moment, please. I'm sorry. I'm finished telling about the dream. That's all there was to it. I was standing in a meadow that had some kind of meaning that I could feel. An airplane flew over to great height. A voice called to me, called my name from the airplane. It was all very clear. The offering of images as a spiritual activity replaces the impulse to find a personal vision and icon. As a spiritual activity, it distracts the individual from the task of finding and recognizing a singular true path. The offering of images categorizes human activity and offers the sum of the categories as a sum of possibilities and alternatives, each one of which must be equally good and equally valid, else the system of categories breaks down. Like modernism, science, and theater as we know it, the offering of images and Protestantism hand in hand, are egalitarian, democratic, and communistic. The offering of images is a secular spiritual activity. The offering of images has in our era attached itself as a spiritual activity to Judaism as a secular corrective to mysticism and individualism. The offering of images is a secularization of Judaism as Protestantism is a secularization of Christianity. Modernism is the secularization of taste. Science is the secularization of memory. And theater as we know it is a secularization of experience. There are other examples, but you get the idea. Remember that we have yet to find a language that is common to the Occident and Orient, except for the language of technology. Consider then the difficulties of speaking to the fourth world, the world of those who are different, with a difference that is independent of geography, for instance, the mentally different. Secularization must exclude the mentally different by definition. The mentally different share no images with us, and they share no history with us. The mentally different cannot be modern. The mentally different cannot be twisted in science. The mentally different cannot appreciate theater as we know it. One supposes that other differences than mental differences separate the fourth world from the three that communicate with such difficulty now. For instance, feeling. Suppose for a moment that beginning this instant, while nothing in you changes mentally, you enter into a state of permanent rapture, maybe not more intense than the pleasure you felt standing in the meadow of your imagination and being at rest in my name without the ambiguity of distance by some animate being or knowing system in an elevated position. To simplify the image a great deal without changing it structurally, but as intense and without the encumbrance of the image, Hypothesis among scientists pretending they speak Greek, watching shadows move and that stuff. Ironic about the Inquisition. The Inquisitors knew what they were up to. Not exactly friendly neighbors, but then they saw it in the language. Sit around and watch the shadows move. Say Eureka when it's proven. Meanwhile, the words change. On the way to Eureka, a little joke. Sunset on the left. How about that? That's one of my thoughts. I've done this. You take a bunch of short ideas and arrange them so that they overlap. That's one long idea. That's a thought. One time one short idea is slightly ahead of another, and another time it's not. They always overlap. That's a rule. So you get a large number of different thoughts. Because one time, one short idea is slightly ahead of another, and another time is not. The thoughts are really different, but more or less the same in the sense that they're all short, which is the important part. The important part is to make it short, because nobody likes to pay attention for very long. Some rich man commissions a portrait of his wife, a famous painter, $50,000. The painter calls up and says it's finished. The man says, hire somebody good to frame it and send it over. The painting arrives, and the man's wife decides where to hang it, probably thinking it doesn't look very much like me, and the man comes home from work where he makes a lot of money, and he looks at it for a few minutes, maybe three or four, and he thinks I got my money's worth. Then he goes and gets a drink, and he and his wife talk about it for a while, and then they go to bed, and that's that. She put it in a place where he can see it every day. While he is, say, drinking coffee in the morning, he might look at it for maybe five or ten seconds every day for a few weeks, but that's too much. Then he's seen it, and he stops looking. Total of ten minutes over three or four months. Now, that's what I call short. Same with thoughts. Four or five seconds are done. 
I got a ticket to a museum with old paintings and tapestries and pots and things. I found the ticket on the street. I am interested in those things. I put on my best clothes, which is not saying much, so they would let me uh, smoke crazy with things about art. The guy taking the ticket doesn't care. He doesn't care as long as you don't trigger the profile rule, which is you can't let certain kinds of people in, which would get him in trouble. The guards don't care. Their feet hurt. So my clothes get by. Some old crazy thinks about art. First thing you notice is how much work it took to make these things. A lot of people, a lot of time. Very impressive, like cathedrals and that kind of thing. Next thing you notice is how nobody in the museum cares. I'm the only person who's actually looking, trying to keep up my appearance, not to get kicked out. Back to no place. Everybody else is just walking around. 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. How nice. I get the idea. The whole thing is traffic. It's like a huge dance made up by the guy who decided where to put things. The same dance every day except Monday when the museum is closed. It's just a huge dance. Some man is looking for his wife, which is part of the dance. Six foreigners in a bunch are looking for the toilets. The kid is looking for his mother who's right behind him. She lets him look good for him, she thinks. Everybody is just walking around. 30 seconds here, 30 seconds there. Finally, well, honey, it's been a couple of hours, I think. We got our money's worth. You know where the bus stop is? Actually, getting there and getting home is more interesting than what's in the museum. And that's why they go. Got to keep moving. I'm getting restless myself. Two hours is a lot of dancing, even if what's outside for me is no place. Well, actually, it's not no place. My place, I like it. I live in the park daytimes. Except summer, when I don't go back to the shelter at night, then I stay all night, I sleep on my bench. My mind is bad. Sometimes I hear voices. Sometimes I see things. Everybody tells me the voices I hear are not there. The pictures I see are not there. I don't care. They're there for me. That's what counts. Sometimes I think my heart will break. Because of the loneliness, it's so lonely. Then sometimes it's fun. I have friends, like everybody. One of my friends stands out in the street and yells at the cars, which we all agree are a pain in the neck until he gets tired. When a cop car goes by, he yells, I am the president of the motherfuckers against drunk driving, by which he means the cops who are mostly always drunk. Then he goes back to sleep. He wears green pants, which I saw him get out of the trash basket about three years ago. You don't want to touch those green pants. Because those are his green pants. He likes those green pants. Those are his green pants because they fit. He also wears a t-shirt that says the Pope's World Tour. And he wears a sweater, which he says his mother did it for him. It's not knitted and he never had a mother, but I would never call him on that. When he goes back to his bench, he pulls the sweater up over his head and he sings for a lot before he goes to sleep. Everybody has their bench. There's enough for everybody. How is that possible? The park is a triangle. It's maybe 120 feet on the long side. 100 feet on one side, 60 feet on the other. Maybe it's bigger. I can't do the arithmetic. There are 10 benches. In summer, sometimes we have a full house, but generally there are just the six of us, me and my five friends. Another friend yells all the time and nobody in particular. We call her Lucille. She says her name's not Lucille, but Lucille's a pretty name, so we call her Lucille. She used to be sort of cute, but now she's getting older and the guys don't flirt with her so much. I don't know where she gets all the energy. Maybe women are stronger than men. I couldn't do that. She yells six hours a day. The man in the diner gives her a big sandwich when she gets hungry because he used to know her before she started yelling, and he probably liked her. He's a kind man. He lives with his mother and his father someplace. He has a strange way of looking down when he finishes a sentence. Balk, his head goes down. We used to think he was crazy, but he gives my friend the sandwiches so he can't be crazy. He doesn't sleep in the park. He takes care of his mom and dad someplace. Another of my friends is called Leonard. I've changed the name to protect the innocent. He and his brother-in-law, Mickey, ran the liquor store next to the park. Mickey and Leonard stood next to each other for 35 years. One day, I think it was Christmas, Mickey comes into the living room of his house late in the evening, and his wife says, Mickey, you don't look too good, and Mickey falls over dead. 
She said, I knew he was dead before he hit the ground, and that was the end of the letter. Now he just walks around the neighborhood. He's dressed in a suit, tie, and gabardine coat. Sometimes he sits on his bench for a few hours, just looking straight ahead. You don't want to talk to Leonard, because he always wants to know how you are. And he says he's going to Florida to retire. He's a good man. I like him. Another of my friends sleeps most of the time. He's asleep right now on his bench. It's raining and everybody is in a doorway out in the rain, bumming cigarettes from French kids who are studying city plan. You don't realize we all speak perfect French. They are talking about city planning, and they don't even see the park. They don't see my friend asleep on his bench. They're looking for action. He can sleep on his bench because somewhere he got a big rug, which is waterproof, so he can sleep anywhere. He is the envy of everybody. Rain doesn't bother him at all. When it's not raining, he sits up sometimes and talks. Now, another of my friends is a movie star. When she was a kid, she was a stand-in for Shirley Temple. She would stand there all day dressed like Shirley Temple while they did the lights and other things. Then Shirley Temple would come out and dance with Bojang, and she would go home. She says in some movies you can see her, but not her face, because when Shirley Temple was tired, they had to get the shot that just took a movie of her. It's hard to see the Shirley Temple in her now. She's somewhat older. I suppose Shirley Temple is somewhat older now, too, so probably you can't see the Shirley Temple in Shirley Temple, but who cares a movie star is a movie star? I like her because she talks so cautiously. Every word is separated from the other by applause. She dresses conservatively. She definitely stays out of the rain. I think California's over. My other friend is a man who lost a couple of legs in some war. He doesn't actually sit in the park. Because when he got into singing a lot when he first came, sometimes a wheelchair would slip out from under him. And we would have to put him back in, which was hard. Because we are not so young and strong anymore except for the man who yells at the cars, and sometimes it would take a long time to get him back in the wheelchair, which interrupted his singing, and we all liked his singing. So we got him to sit with the back of the wheelchair up against the building across the street from the park. He could lock the brakes with the wheelchair up against the building and never fall, no matter how big the singing got. I have to say this, which is not normal, but we don't have to be close to each other in theater inches in order to have the fun of being together. Something happened. We don't have to be as close to each other as ordinary. The benches are more or less a long way from each other, but I can hear everybody, I mean my friends, just like they're right next to me. It's sort of strange. I never would have thought it was possible before I came here. I can't hear a lot of things in the other world. Maybe I don't want to hear them, and probably I couldn't hear them if I wanted to. Far away, too soft to the other things going on, but among our friends, it's just like we are right next to each other all the time. I can hear everything. I can hear them singing. I can hear them telling their stories to get the stories right. You have to tell a story many times to get it right. At first, the parts don't go together right. Story doesn't make sense. It doesn't say what a story is supposed to say, so you have to keep practicing on it. You have to get it right so that it says what you know it says, but it doesn't say yet. Keep practicing. Move this part, move that part. Take out this part, take out that part. Remember something that wasn't there when you started. Add a little something here and there, maybe not even true, to give it a little local color so that you can remember it. Then the story becomes a kind of friend to make you feel good about yourself, which is the main thing, to keep away the hurt, to keep away feeling bad, which is hard. I know it's hard among us, my friends and me, because we all hurt so much, not just in the head and the sounds and the pictures, but in the heart. Like the thing is lost, that will never come back, the irreversibilities, if you know what I mean. The irreversibilities become quite heavy and this spoil your day to day. I suppose it's true for everybody. Why not? But the man who commissioned the painting of his wife has irreversibilities, lots of them probably. His wife has irreversibilities. That's why the painting doesn't look like her. 
Because something changed since the painter took the photograph to make the painting from. Something happened. What is that? Then the things keep happening. The irreversibilities keep piling up, and by the time the painting comes, it's not even you. The painting itself is full of irreversibilities. The irreversibilities of whatever. But what the heck, at least you don't have to look at it for long. Ten minutes over four or five years. That's where I got the idea of shortness. The ideas have to be so short that the irreversibilities don't matter. Sorry, I got off the subject. I was thinking about my friends and how much I love them. Sound, yelling, singing stories. How you tell the story sometimes almost a whisper, sometimes louder until you get it right. Then the story is a kind of friend to make you feel good about yourself, which is the main thing to keep away the hurt of the universe. Now, most of my friends could fix it up, you think. The man who yells at cars could go to law school. No more park, no more bench, no more green pants in the folk world to a t-shirt, double-breasted, yell at the jury. I am the president of motherfuckers against drunk driving, by which he means the police win a lot of cases, defend the people against the state. I'll send the suburbs, wife and kid, little league games, yell at the umpire, win the case. The president of motherfuckers against drunk driving, by which he means the police wins again. Green pants and coal. Leonard could retire to Florida. My friend with the rug could sell rugs. All irreversibilities which could be reversed, we think wrongly, I might add. Best friend who lost a couple of legs. Greetings. Definitely irreversibilities. We don't grow back legs. So he's a kind of hero in the park. His irreversibilities are real. He doesn't have to feel like it could be changed with a little exercise of the will. He doesn't have to think of himself as a fuck up. He doesn't have legs. When he sings, I'm only half a man, he's telling the truth, such as it is from our point of view. Also, he happens to be a good singer. So we are going to sing a few of his songs. Now this will be kind of confusing. There are the memories. I don't know what else to call them from the time before the legs thing. From the time before the bullets were flying all around and all the noise and screaming. And he looked down and there was nothing there. And the pizza delivery boy comes crawling out with a morphine peanut. Bite off the end and jam it in him and squeeze. Hope the man gets through it so we can send him home without legs. From before that time, there are the memories which my friends and I will sing for you. Some are better than others day by day. One day this one makes you cry, next day is I'll another comes clear. And you are relieved of the loneliness and the voices and the pictures and the I could have been and the yelling. Next day another, next day another memories. Well, we were cruising, you know. Go up to 8 Miles Rose for some French fries. Talk to the guys in the next car about things. A little bit of tension, but nothing to worry about. This guy wanted to marry my sister, so we cruised a lot. A couple of beers and cars, smoke, a couple of cigarettes. Up one street, down the other. Talking about big things, you know, life, that kind of stuff. I'm not always totally there. I'm always sort of scared, so there's always two of me. This guy is what they call the hoodlum he's tough. Go up to 8 Mile Road for some French fries And you never know what's going to happen Some guy says the wrong thing And first thing you know, you're out the car's not going out I don't like fighting and I'm no good at it I always get a big one and there's like a lump on my face For a couple of Greetings. days I always lose But this guy, my friend, always wins I mean, he's tough and he has this attitude like What the hell? Beat the shit out of his guy And then come over and take care of me By this time I'm ducking and acting like a kid I don't have the attitude and I know it I really like this guy because of the attitude I can't get the attitude, it's special, you know What the hell, the guy who insulted you is going to die anyway So why not beat the shit out of him right here Actually my friend is also a nice guy And like he's very smart 
It's funny about hoodlums. I mean, tough guys. I've got to stop using hoodlums. I mean, guys with the attitude. I never knew very many because I was a sister. The people I ran around with went to the college bars and drank beer and talked about getting laid and made jokes about girls and talked about their parents and talked about what they were going to do to succeed. Sitting here, thinking about life. In all its form, one of those Rapid days, change. far or nothing fits. Breakfast at the Holiday Inn Hotel, where I live ordinarily, especially where I live in other places. I look forward to breakfast. Six cups of tea plain, three pieces of toasted bread, margarine and honey, and time to think about myself, the coordination of body and mind that I can do in a simple form. I don't take the tea to the table. I pour myself a cup of tea in one place and carry the cup to the table where I sit to drink it. Then I go back for another cup and so forth. Six trips more or less. Six cups of tea and Three pieces of toast. I like the getting up and down part. It's a kind of exercise of something or other. One, freedom of choice. Two, freedom of movement. I've been in too many places in my life where it was all at the table and imposed. A kind of discipline on me, especially that in the morning I don't like. It's too social, or whatever that word is. Let's call this little song tap dancing in the same air. Yesterday, because of the social pressure, I always feel when I don't eat breakfast alone. I ordered breakfast in my room. That was nice. Looking out through the glass doors, over the little balcony, into the river, with all the barges going back and forth, and all the buildings across the river where the people live, I thought to myself, what's in the barges? This is the kind of question I think about at breakfast. According to Cicero, whoever he is, only people with a powerful memory know what they intend to say and for how long they are going to speak and in what style and what points they have already answered and what still remains. And they can remember, too, from other cases, many arguments which they have previously advanced and many which they have heard from some other people, unquote. We are in the presence of amazing powers of memory. Let's call this one the last 1,000 hours or almost six weeks. The movement by man to man photographer of contrasts or research in the colonization of German music by the African spirit. One, the history. Two, the uh, casualties. I think of myself very much as an organization man. It's all inside me, if you know what that might mean. I believe there are either five kinds of character or seven kinds of character. One is the organization man. Another might be called the interpreter. Another might be called the helpful woman. Another might be called the woman of the different voice or different way of speaking and so on. Each of these characters has its equivalent, I suppose, in the world of unshared knowledge. Now, the question of whether we mold our characters to satisfy that requirement is a question I couldn't possibly 
answer here. It could be answered, and I could answer it, but not here. It's enough to point out the import of those equivalencies. Assume that the fact has crossed every person's mind, if only as an answer to why movies, and to remind us that this movie no less than any other depends on the notion of the archetype or its believability. We are not interested in skin as such or hair as such or bone structure as such. We are not interested in those lessons. We can hardly bring ourselves to look into the mirror in the moment. It is it true that to reconstruct our image of ourselves individually each day to return from dreams is difficult, so it is not an interest in skin and hair or bone structure that brings us to this movie. So what brings us to this movie now? innocence or ignorance. I know there is not one person in this audience who would claim to be surprised. So innocence or ignorance is out. So what brings us to this movie? A commission from Bandango di Spandolo. Look at that shoe. How nice. Quote, in the earthly copies of justice and temperance and other ideas which are precious to souls, there is no light, but only a few approaching the images through the dark organs of sense. Behold, in them, the nature of that which they imitate, unquote. I don't understand that. In the earthly copies of justice and temperaments and other ideas which are precious to souls, there is no light, but only a few approaching the images through the darkling organs of sins. Behold in them the nature of that which they imitate. I don't understand that. Anyway, later, from Skepsis, says Strabo, came Metrodoros, or Metrodoros, a man who changed from his pursuit of philosophy to political life and taught rhetoric for the most part in his written works, and he used a brand new style, and he dazzled many. He seems to have played a considerable political as well as cultural at the court, where he was for a time in high favor, though Plutarch hints that he was eventually put out of the way by his brilliant but cruel master. I think I understand that. Thank you.
Hello. 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 Can I help? He thinks these thoughts. Man harms woman. Woman harms child. Man harms child. Men and women together harm child. He can't read the newspaper or watch the television news. Harming someone is the main news. Yeah, 
nations harm nations, tribes harm other tribes, that's not news. He realizes that many people representing one belief always act to harm another group representing another belief. The news that people harm other people is not news. After many thousands of years, it is no longer news. Yeah. It should have been obvious when he couldn't speak to his high school girlfriends, grandparents, prosperous grandparents, but grandparents nevertheless, the parents having disappeared unexplainably and totally, the grandparents owning a grocery store in a fancy part of town where his uncle worked for a time watering vegetables. I thought of suicide. Then one day I realized that the doctor is wrong. Just wrong. But it was a close call for me. I grew up with deafness. It is no fun. I'm at a nadir. I'm making a big deal about the nadirs. That's because they are memorable. You forget about them at the apogee. At the apogee, you think you did it by yourself. You are a self-made man. But in the nadir, what happens is like a curse. You didn't do it and you can't figure it out. That's that's why it's memorable. I lose my job at the post office. I persuade my wife to get a job. At least we will have something to live on until I connect. And this is the year I get kicked out of school. That's good. Look at people who are succeeding. I was getting afraid that I would get through somehow and become a professor of music at the University of Nowhere. Then I wouldn't do anything for the rest of my life except put scores in my file cabinet. The ruins of ambition were everywhere. The real news is that some person has harmed some other person. The details disgust him. He thinks harm is only possible because the person doing the harm is larger than the person being harmed. And the act of harming is only possible because the person doing the harm is larger than the person being harmed. The person being harmed is smaller. The larger person thinks he should harm the smaller person just for the heck of it. He can't imagine a small person harming a larger person. Unless... Come amongst his very, really grand men and women to Leonardo di Ser Piero, D'Antonio di Ser Piero, di Ser Guido da Vinci, very titanically. Yes, yeah, very truly great manners of Helen Brown Norton, very heroic to all of an artist man, had very dissolution to leave amongst her very, really grand men and women to Richard Doddridge, Blackmore, Dennis Diderot, Bartolome, Estadar, Mario, Gustave, Charpentier, Thomas Clayton, Wolf, James Malahan, Kane, Susan Bogart, Warner, and Marie Henri Bale, very titanically. They're very truly great manners of John Burton, all of an very heroically Charles Lambert, Morgan, Guido, Amy, John Julius, Christian Sidney, Robert Burnett, Frank, and Cynthia Frost, and Paul Kuhn, and Bill David que construye ciudades están condenadas a mover rocas y luchar contra ellas. Las rocas no saltan ni bailan con ellos que construyen ciudades. Se hacen las muertas. 
frente de los que construyen ciudades. La idea de la agricultura no se trata de alimentar a la gente. La idea de la agricultura es mejoramiento. Lo claro como solución al problema de la gravedad. Sí. confundido con la idea de alimentar a la gente. Confused with the idea of feeding and the people, a lo cual nos tenemos que acostumbrar. Is something we have to live with. The rocks have stopped dancing. Our motto is in entertainment what goes up must come down. You've been listening to over the edge, and it's been a Robert Ashley rock block. Uh, eternal shame of all forms of uh, form radio. I will back announce that was Yellow Man with Heart with Wings by Robert Ashley. Before that was a bit of the screaming. It was The Wolf Man by Robert Ashley. Before that was In Sarah Mink and Christ Beethoven, There Were Men and Women by Robert Ashley. Before that was Act Three, Years 29 through 42 from the opera Crash. By Robert Ashley. Before that was Tap Dancing in the Sand by Robert Ashley. Before that was the track Friends from the opera Dust by Robert Ashley. Before that was Eagle Tearing Hearts Out of Chests from the opera Foreign Experiences. Before that, The Doctor from the opera Improvement. Before that, The Bar from the opera Perfect Lives. And that brings us to the top of the last hour. Thank you for Kanoko Nishi and the duo, the live electronic music featuring an acoustic koto. This is Over the Edge. This is Wobbly. Stay tuned for Puzzle and Evidence. K-Rob, this week, or next week, week after, and all next month, as I leave for a one-week tour in Europe. I mean, sorry, one-month tour. And uh, there's a concert next Wednesday at the Lab. Yeah, that's all I'll say. And... Greetings. Lo que entretiene. Sube y baja las rocas ya no bailan.
Pero vamos a continuar. Más tarde tendremos tiempo de hablar sobre la arquitectura. Y aclarar las cosas. Ahora continuamos al mensaje. Hello. El mensaje es están armados. Era inevitable. To create is divine. To reproduce is human. Man Ray. Quiero decir, era inevitable que se disfundiese entre otro hasta llegar. Um, thank you. Bye bye. Zero. In the old days, Hi. Europe would have a military war. Oh, of course, it, this is such Jordan. a different kind of war. This is Grumpy from Can the I help? Spotlight. Just got done listening to a radio recast of KPFA's Over the Edge Presents Negative Lands radio show for the last 30, 40 years. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I uh, usually do a recast. It usually drives people out of my channel from the noise, but I, I just love to listen to the radio show myself, so I listen to it while I stream. And I do have permission by Wobbly and several of the other guys in the band to recast their radio show. They say it's in the public domain. Alright, let's see what I'm up to now.